Alright, hello people, welcome back. Uh, I think some of you might be concerned that I didn't stream today. You know, we've been having so many good chill sessions together. Uh, you know, have string making and chill. We've done four days in a row and I guess this is our fifth day in a row. Uh, it is 1.30 a.m. here right now. Hello to the notification spot. And maybe a few other people will jump in. Anonymous, Fatty Patty, Early Bird, as usual. So, yeah, it's been a very, very warm day. Uh, I think the mercury here, I think 41 degrees today, and tomorrow's will be 42 degrees. So it's going to be really warm, and it is still warm. Uh, I think it's still hovering around like 30 ish degrees at night time or something, or maybe high 20s. So it is pretty warm. Uh, you can see I'm still kind of sweaty, and it's really humid in here pretty uh, miserable. Now I didn't train today unfortunately. I, I did plan to um, do some preparation before the state championship but uh, yeah it was way too warm. My training partner was called out to um, watch the Australian Open. Um, we had one more training partner but I was sane and I chose not to train in 40 degree heat. Um, no real point in um, you know there's no real point in going out to train when you're not in the mood to do so and uh, mood is so important if you go out and you're miserable and it's hot or it's raining even and you don't want to train there's just no benefit now you're in Perth hey lucky you I guess and not really lucky but at least you're not in 40 degree heat hopefully um, so yeah um, I, I really haven't done much today uh, I have done a lot of gaming actually not fun gaming just recording uh, doing War Thunder videos and footage for the French tanks um, as well as the uh, the German Ersatz M10, uh, and I did some more Far Cry Primal. I don't know why I'm I'm trying 100% run. Well, I've played the game, I finished it. I have enough footage to cover like my next um, pop uh, pot shot series, a pop shot series. But I don't know. I just want to get 100%. Like, it's been a while since I played. It's a good game. Kind of repetitive though. Um, so how are people going right now? Do I recommend barreled or parallel sharps? For your beginner sharps, you're probably going to be parallel, but once you get to an advanced level or intermediate, then you start getting uh, barreled. Barreled sharps tend to perform much better over distance and in wind. That's why that you know, the X tender, sorry, so much better. <laughs> it's winter, yeah. Ah. All right, so what uh, I, I asked one of my, uh, my club colleague to uh, do an inventory check of what boats we have remaining. We're quite a few, and uh, I want to make a few more strings today. We've made seven 66-inch strings, which may or may not be fixed, and we've made uh, two 62-inch strings. We made blue... Do we make two? I've, I've actually lost count now. I've got to go over there. We made bubble gum. Yeah, we made bubble gum and we made Aztec. So we made, yeah, seven 66-inch. And we made bubble gum and we, bubble gum, bubble gum and Aztec. So we've made the uh, blue string with pink serving and the brown and green string. So that's a two color string. We went really fancy. Um, we went really fancy on the uh, the the Daphne strings. Far more effort than a club bow needs, but we were running low on color choices. What's your war thunder? Watch my videos. Um, you, you see my username all the time, uh, so you've probably seen me a few times. Uh, do I? Do you know if gold tip ultralights are parallel? But I don't know actually. You might have to check the um, the manufacturer's website. I don't know. I've never used them. I'm not sure if they're barreled or straight. Okay, so uh, it is one thirty-five. I want to make a couple of strings tonight. So as usual, we'll leave the. Uh, decision making to our viewers and under naming rights as well as this. Oh, it's orange. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm picking this up thinking, what color is this? Because I've got like orange light and white light, and it looks like a satiny color. I thought it was a pink string, but I don't have any more pink of this. It looks like a real weird color. It's orange. Why, why don't I have orange? I, I, why not buy orange? I've never used it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I haven't come across um, the uh, the ultralights. Okay, uh, so I'm just taking some questions quickly. Tao Zhang, uh, Samic Sage or Topin R2 pack or Phantom? I only have 200 Australian dollars. Um, I of those three, the uh, I would not recommend the R2 pack. 
that's a waste of your cash really i mean like if you want to spend like 120 bucks on everything in one shot then you could get toe point r2 i wouldn't recommend the pack of those three i prefer the same age because that feels more like a real bow but you may just spend a bit more on arrows so you might exceed your budget if you if you're really stuck on 200 bucks then phantom is the cheapest bow but you still need arrows but i would not recommend the toe point r2 for its pack all right uh black string uh blue serving not yet you know you should should we start with that i, I haven't caught a vote yet but uh you know what i want to i want to start with string let's let's get the rhythm going so we have black oh ow dang my head there's a laptop there sorry um and blue serving shall we do this 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 would be a nice color scheme black and blue have we had black string yet we have we haven't have we i don't think we have all right, so should we start with, uh, with a black string and blue serving? How does that sound? National colors. Uh, national colors are good, actually. But the, uh, I'd feel they'd be better off for um, your actual um, professional bow, your, your competition bow. For um, the club bows, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do so. I've done black string, red serving already. That was the, uh, the night rose. We, we didn't call it uh, Black Widow. Yeah, Taojang, exactly. It's, 40, it's freaking 40 degrees. I mean, it's 30 something right now. It's not comfortable. That's why I'm doing this right now. I, I don't wanna. I, my plan is to sleep through the heat tomorrow. So I'll wake up super late and it'll be a little cooler, hopefully. Are we making hideous bow strings? No, we're making awesome bow strings. The hideous bow strings turn out really good. So we're making really good strings, which turn out really bad. Uh, we're still picking colors. So how about this? Are we going for black and blue? Come on, chat. Let's go with black and blue. And uh, you might start thinking about names at the moment. So uh, I'll, I'll get names later. But uh, let's do a black and blue string. And we might uh, pick up a dual color string later. So, okay. Marine. Is that, is that the name? Night Sky. So we've got Nightshade, Night, Night Rose, and Night Sky. I'm not sure about that one. What are the colors? Um, uh, uh, let's let's do colors later. Let's make a string first, because uh, let, let, let's just start with one, one simple uh, one color string, and we'll worry about the other colors later. Don't mind the fan in the background. I'm not, okay, can you can hear my fan in the background. I've got a fan like down here uh, because it is really warm. I have no air con in the house, so that's my only form of cooling. It was too loud. Let me know. I'll turn it off. and we'll sweat a bit, but uh, hopefully it should be okay. Not as questions. How am I doing the heat wave? Yeah, not very well. Like I, I prefer to sleep during the heat waves, and especially when it's um, not a work day, and for me it's not right now, then even better. Uh, but yeah, I try to sleep through the heat, and I wake up after the cool change hits. But I find out when you wake up during the heat, you don't really notice because you're very climatized. It's, it's, when the, it's when it becomes hot, it becomes unbearable, or you go from a cool like room to a hot outdoor environment, but if you are like just in one temperature, one like climate zone, whether it's your room or outside, you don't really notice as much. I find. So there are days where it's been four degrees. So I've woken up quite late. It's four degrees, but your your brain kind of is set at four degrees, so it doesn't feel like it's super hot. It feels like normal. But uh, when the cool change hits tomorrow or today, it's gonna be awesome. I might go outside the backyard to do some um, thumb draw shooting. I don't know, I've been live streaming practice quite a while. I'm not sure if people are interested in watching me do a live stream practice. That was my first few uh, live stream test sessions with the, um, the laptop cameras. Now I've got a better setup. Could be fun. My hands are slipping on the, uh, the jig. But see, it is really muggy in here. Four passes. Yep, four. Uh, in case I didn't mention, I'm gonna make um, four more of these 62 inch strings. We've got a bunch of, like a lot of bows, we still have like 10 or so bows. But uh, I've made the executive decision to make strings in every bow and name every bow. I really think it's a good idea. It, when we have like 20 bows, it's like, like we have like a, a riding club and every horse has a name. 
I feel this is a similar effect. You know, every bow is a name. So you turn to a club, you pick your favorite bow. Because people like like to um kind of like invent personalities for each you know, every their own. Like it's kind of like people name things. I don't name bows. I mean, come to think about it, naming bows isn't new. But I don't name my bows. I just they're just tools to me. But for the club, you know, why not? Why not have names? Well, one of the things that I saw back when I used to donate blood was that the blood machines uh, used to have names, like Beatrice or Margaret or something. And it makes sense because, you know, when you're talking about machines, it's, you know, like you're rather than refer to by serial number, which no one remembers, you give it a name. So if Margaret's playing up, you know what it is. I'm coming to do the same thing for the bows. <coughs> Sorry. So if uh, you know a uh, nightshade needs some um, uh, repairs or uh, maintenance, then we can pull nightshade off the rack and fix it. Uh, I'm really thinking about a lot of the um, the female representation. So our, our female members and volunteers and the girls who come to shoot the club, it's kind of stereotyping a bit or gender stereotyping. But you know I find females are much better at forming attachments if I like this. Um, I've shifted the camera by the way. You can't see my face. I'm doing this, but. Uh, if this angle doesn't work, let me know. I think it shows the jig better, but it shows me less, which is probably a good thing. And you can tell I'm tired or um, bothered because I'm trying to serve without the serving jig. Uh, let's try that again. So let's grab my jig. I still can't find my biter jig. Uh, I still can't find my biter jig. That, that's a nice like $60 jig. It's so luxurious. Never used it. I don't know where it is. <laughs> the bow is the disappointer. Is, is that the bow or you? <laughs> uh, nothing personal, Walter. I, I know you, you posted some really nice comments in the uh, the videos. Uh, I'd really like to comment on the um, the Olympic bow video, how you talked about how all the attachments like your Wi-Fi and 10 and stuff. Uh, that's clever. No, it's so important to get a sense of humour. To have one, rather. So what, are people, what are people talking about? Chatting the way. Um, I, I can move chat actually. So when I'm working on the thing, I'll move chat over. Just that I'm moving around so much that I kind of forget to move chat. Let's do that. So I'll, when I start at the string, I'll, I'll, I'll move the chat over to the side. So you can see what's happening. <laughs> it's the bow, Warden. Sure, that, that, that's what we tell ourselves. It's not me, it's the bow. We should name the bow Zuba Duper now, like the problem is that each Zuba Duper has a name already. Um, if you haven't, Google, Zo uh, sorry, search Zuba Duper on YouTube, you'll find me. Uh, about four years ago, for one of my first videos, my first vlogs, um, I did reviews of every Zuba Duper flavor. And that was back when, I don't know why I did that. It was a day like this where it was like four degrees. Um, and the Zuba Dupers have weird names, you have like Fairy Floss and... Um, you know, like space cola or something. Uh, would I make a string with two colors serving? I can. Is in like, like separate colors for the end loops and center loop, or like two color? Cause you can't really do. So I'm the chair there. You can't really do a two color serving like in one shot unless you actually have a two color thread. And there are two color threads. I mean, this one's plain blue, but I've got like um. Different ones over here. I can't find one. I've got one over here somewhere. Bury it in here. But yeah, you, you can get like two color servings, um, but you don't really do multicolor two color servings uh, manually. I mean, I, I could, for example, do like um, like red, white, and blue for a servant. That means that means three different servings, rather than um, one serving. And considering we're making um, strings like in bulk at the moment. Uh, I don't really want to um, complicate the process. Because again, these are club bows. We're being fancy as it is by making unique strings for each one and therefore giving each one an identity. We don't really want to um, uh, go overboard with the string, the serving colours. There the, the, the is no black and blue zuper duper. <laughs> yeah, I need a hard hat. <laughs> Alright, so let's start our string. I'm going to shift the uh, chat window over that we can see the string in action. 
Uh, let's go. Let's go here. There we go. All right. Uh, hopefully, uh, my backdrop doesn't block her too much. But uh, you should be able to see the rest of the serving view now. All right. Let's let's make a start. I've got I've got some uh, cola cordial in the freezer at the moment. I'm letting it sit there. So once I finish this first string, I'm going to refresh a bit. The body temperature is quite high right now. I need to hydrate to uh, get it down a bit. I mean, uh, it, even so, uh, I feel kind of overdressed right now in the, the heat. But in the interest of not offending my viewers, uh, I'll keep things as they are. So what's what's the topic today, people? What are we talking about? Hi, Andres. <laughs> I'm not reading chat. Yeah, cordial hot base is the bomb. I've got lime in the fridge, but I've still got a, like a, a bit of uh, coal remaining. Cotties, of course. Problem is that we don't have ice. It sucks. Uh, well, I, I've got a whole bottle worth, just to be sure I've had enough for like the stream. I don't want to freak, I want to drink it. At the same time, I don't want to be like, I don't like warm cordial. Warm co co cordial on hot days is a bomb, but warm cordial hot days is a bomb. That's a terrible there. Yeah? Alright. Let's start with this. I haven't lost my touch yet, which is good. Considering I haven't made a string for like, I don't know. Six hours. <laughs> All right. So that's out of the way. Looking good. Turn it. The tension was good to begin with. I didn't really um, do much to uh, change the, uh, the tension and the, uh, the string. So I, I might want to strip it out a bit. Just make it easy to do this part. And then we rotate it. It'll be fine. All right. Chop this off. Well, I wonder if uh, Grizzly Jim will join us today. I think it's what, um, kind of nearly noon and where he is. It was nice having him last night. Uh, he, he messaged me on Facebook, yeah, so it's quite better because he was, he, he was making strings while uh, watching a stream of me making strings. I said, well, he, he should, I reckon he should do a stream of him making strings. People will watch that. People will watch, you know, Grizzly Jim make strings. I mean, people watching me make strings. I'm sure people love watching Grizzly make uh, strings. I think he's a much more interesting person to watch than I am. Uh, I, I assume he's a professional string maker because he has a business, right? Grizzly strings. Uh, uh, I'm the new, I'm the amateur I'm making club strings and they're giving really bad names. And he's the real pro. I do recommend Grizzly strings. Like uh, he, he makes really nice strings, well packed, made of love. And yeah, the uh, the black and blue is really good. I'm thinking maybe midnight. This this, this color combination does remind me of midnight. Uh, I had a comment um, not too long ago uh, today, actually, uh, one of my videos where. Um, you know, one advantage of serving different colors is to know which one's top, which one's bottom. You could. But I find, like, I've never seen someone have a problem remembering what's top and bottom. The loop's really obvious, the size of the loop. So once you put your knocking point on, it's really obvious what it is. And I don't think you need to um, have any more visual cues to uh, separate uh, top and bottom end loops. That's not you can't. It kind of like ruins the aesthetic because people like the balance and the, uh, the symmetry of the bowstring. So uh, having different colors serve end loops is a little uh, self-defeating. It's not bad. It's a bit big for a small loop. It will be all right. So we'll flip it around. I did check the length. This should be good. That. 
Oh, it's nice and warm. Very good tension. All right, let, let's have a breather. I want to see chat on the uh, the other corner. <laughs> can you have loops that are too big? Yes, you can. <laughs> well, if they uh, if they steal my uh, my bows and the strings and I try and sell it, and each bow has a unique name and unique identity, and uh, everyone on the internet who's seen my videos will know the bows. So uh, if they try to offload, good luck with that. Because they have no resale value. And uh, the fact that they're now uniquely identifiable. Because there, there is no serial number search, you know. Like, like you, you, what you need are identifying marks. And this is one of the, uh, you know. You, you can always remove the bow string, right? But what's the point of that? Like, well, why, why steal a bow and try to pawn it off without the like, parts? The strings can be replaced. Bows. Like you're spending more effort trying to steal a bow than you know. Uh, like if, if you steal like good stuff for like high end compound gear, then yeah, that that's hot property. That can sell for a lot of money, unfortunately. But stealing like club recurves, there's no value in this. And the fact that I'm making custom strings, this is still cost about ten bucks on a string. I'm being fancy, but the any if I ever sold these strings, the cost is mostly markup. Yeah, you know, make it look really good because I made them, and they get like they're real exclusive. But there's no value in this, really. So if something to steal it, try. Again, I mean they're, they're still mostly for crappy bows, but now I want all our new bows to have personality. I also need a way to distinguish the left-handed bows. I mean, obviously we can write it on, but uh, certain strings will go on left-handed bows, right? So should we have um, a separate like, category of strings for left-handers? You can tell it's pretty warm because like, we, we coped the BS today. We're not sitting around picking colours and making names. It's like, we're making midnight, guys, that's it. So, our first stream we've done in a lot. It's only been what, 20 minutes on stream, which started, what, five minutes ago? Ish. So, when, when you're in a no BS mood, you get things done. And I like getting things done. It's one of my uh, life matches. Get stuff done. When in doubt, get stuff done. Alright, big loop done. And I guess we're center serving. Now, let, let's have a trivia, guys. Now, uh, last night, I, I set my markers on my letters on my jig. Which letters were the ones for a 62 inch string, the center serving? Let, let's see if you remember. What were the letters for a 62 inch string? Uh, I'm a teacher, what do you think? Everything you do is a test. Sebastian is correct, I to G. <laughs> We're paying attention guys, well done. So uh, on my Decat string jig, my uh, measurements for a 62 inch center serving is I to G. Assuming that is correct in the first place, but we did measure my Samic Polaris for the string there 62 inch. That means every 62 inch string I make should have the same serving. If that works, so should this. 
repairable, of course, should things go wrong. And I, I do anticipate that my uh, 66 inch strings might need a bit of tweaking. If I'm lucky, they might just fit the bows and the arrows when we put the knocking points on. So I might have to uh, do some repairs for those, but that's okay. Wasn't really paying attention to those. All right, let's uh, let's rock it up. It's funny how the chat turns up nice in my white shirt. That was unintentional. This is everyone's favorite part, isn't it? I, re I reckon like we should we should have some like royalty-free music just playing in the background when this happens. Or music in general, but that like trigger the copyright, you know, on the videos. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Nothing wrong at all with that spin. That looks good on the street. I think that is even straight apart. Apart from the chill session and the talk, but I think that the uh, the spin part is like the finishing touch. It's like the the flare that you want for um, the string. Forget dropping the bow. This is the uh, the true mic drop. The uh, the jig spin. Or what we should have is like we should have the um, the the link spin meme. With uh, um, Ava's poker, we call it jig spin. Let's play on a loop. We, we, we have to try that. That's it, that took around about 10 minutes. That's a good pace. Hi, Pilling. And hello, Leonardo. Buongiorno. Man, it's so it's so hot that the wax is completely melted. Man, that's uh. <laughs> I didn't warm the string up. This is like, so warm. That just goes right on. This is me use it. It's like a really like moist lipstick. Dish. That makes life easy in some ways. The clean up might be a little uh, messy. I'll check chat in a moment. It's gonna finish waxing this. Wasn't really thinking about it, but uh, loops looked alright. A little similar, actually, they're, they're too similar. But uh, once I put one on, it'll stay on, so don't be a problem. Gonna make bigger loops next time. Like bigger, big loops, or small, small loops. So, let us go for a community vote for the name. So, I'll move to chat over. <laughs> 1812 Overture. <laughs> we need some cannons for those. So let's move it over here. So what are we calling this bowstring? It is a black string with 
blue serving. So my original uh, name was Midnight. Are we going with Midnight or are we going to change it up? We normally come up with some nice uh, names. What will be this one? Need to start with night. Well, not necessarily uh, start with night. Black sky doesn't sound good as a name. If you think about it. I don't like bru bruise. Sounds terrible for a bow. And bows ca bows cause bruises. I don't think we should call it a bruise. The bruiser. Moonlight, huh? The deep sea. I don't know about that one. Doesn't sound like me. Midnight. I'll go for midnight. Uh, moonlight. I don't know. Like black and blue doesn't sound like moonlight to me. Luna. Is it not bad, Luna? Nova's nice. So I've got Midnight and we have Nova. So again, that's the uh, the string we're looking at. I don't like Ninja. It is kind of Ninja colors, but not. In oh, you know, actually, Ninja's not bad. We could go with Ninja. So my, my top three right now are Midnight, uh, Nova, and Ninja. Uh, uh, Luna's not my top three. Nice name though. I'm not, I'm not sure I've used for this one. So we got the, the three options I'm giving out are uh, Nova, Midnight, and Ninja. Tasha votes. Nova, Midnight, or Ninja? Nova, Midnight, Ninja. No, one of the three. You get one choice. Not sure where the Nazi is coming from. So we've got, I think, four for Ninja. A couple, three at midnight. This is a close one, guys. Yeah, yeah tiebreaker here. Midnight Ninja sounds too good for a club bar. Because like what ends up happening is you shorten it anyway, right? So you can call it Midnight Nova Ninja, but you call it Ninja at the end, All right? So what would be the actual name? Just call it, call it one name. Midnight Ninja is a good name, not for a bow. You can't call that. It's, it's like how horses have like really fancy names in the race, but the actual name is like um, Bell. Where did your life go wrong? Um, I reckon when you started archery. Hmm. That's close. It's either Midnight or Ninja. Nova's out now. I think Ninja's gonna win out. I think Ninja has it. Alright, so our black string with blue serving is Ninja. We have Nightshade already, and our Nightshade was black and purple. This one is Ninja. So we have christened this here string. This is the Ninja string. And now you don't see it. There we go. I mean, yes, the uh, the naming is the hardest part. It's like when, you, when you, like, um, when, when you play a new RPG, the hardest part is naming your character. Alright, I'm going to get my cola cordial from the freezer. Hopefully it's cool enough and I will be back in about a minute.
Excellent. The, the bottle is cold. I'm using a uh, stainless steel bottle. So the bottle is cold. The uh, corner on should be cool enough. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. I'll probably exhaust that by the time I start the next string. I do have um, a sponge in the freezer, so um, one, one life hack is uh, soak a sponge with water obviously, uh, put it in a uh, Ziploc bag and put it in your freezer. You've got a, a free ice pack sitting around. Pure archery juice. <laughs> oh! Banaba, making a ninja turtle set of green strings with different servings. Ooh, oh, unfortunately I don't have orange. I've got red, blue, purple, but I don't have an orange serving. That would have been a really good idea actually, the ninja turtles, that would be so cool. I mean, it, it could still work by the way. Did we make a green string? We did, right? We made a watermelon. That, that was pink soap. It doesn't count. But I do not have orange. I want orange thread, but not orange serving. Damn. The, the closest I have is like yellow. And yellow is an orange. That, that's, a, that's a good idea, though. <laughs> Not about orange. <laughs> we make three, yeah. Like, uh, he, he cares about Michelangelo, right? The Raphael, Donatello, and Leonardo. <laughs> Ninja Turtle, that's a really good idea. I mean, if you buy like, a set of um, like four identical bows, we'll, we'll make a Ninja Turtle string. Do we cut? No. We hear some squeaking in my chair. I don't have red string, not Dacron. Let's remember, Dacron is the cheap material. It costs like 20 bucks a spool, and you can make tons of strings of those. Very cheap material to make strings from. But my main collection is 8125G. Because most people who make who request custom strings shoot a competitive bow. Okay, so I don't have a large Dacron collection because Dacron's only for traditional or club bows. So I don't really have red. Oh, I don't have a lot of colors. Speaking of colors, let's, let's, let's start voting our next color. So we'll bring the cards out again. Hopefully the uh, the color works alright. Pink, white, blue, bronze, and with some green left over. So let's start with our color or colors. Well, we we are now opening the option for a two color string. Now, I'm not going to do a three color string, that's way too hard for a 12 strand. Because remember, the strands have to stay separate for the whole process. It's easier to separate um, six strands each. When you start, if you have 12, um, if you have uh, a 12 strand string and you want three colors, that's only f two strands each basically, isn't it? It's four parcels, so it's two parcels of four strands each. And that's tough. Blue and white. Candy cane, pink and white. That could be fun. So we've got a lot of blue and, and white voting. I don't have red people. There's no red here. Uh, unless you mean uh, red serving. Uh, this is in the sloop, steel man. I've got black, by the way. That's where the black went. So we, we can be black. Where's my black? Yeah, that, that's a pretty obvious card to throw away. Being very ninja at the moment. Where's my back serving? Oh, there it is. 
Alright, sorry, Mr. Color, black. So black is an option. We, we could do like Yin Yang or Penguin. <laughs> How about Penguin? I don't have grey serving. Candy canes aren't pink and white. Candy canes are red and white. <laughs> we've we've done um we haven't done blue and yellow yet. So I, I think at the moment let, let, let's let's cut the uh the popular ones out. So it seems at the moment that the most popular one, the popular one, to do a two color string, it, it seems to be these three colors. Either white and blue or white and pink. The bow is your typical um, wooden bow. I have green serving, yes. Do you want yellow serving penguin? I don't know, I do <coughs> So what do you want? We got white and pink or white and blue? Pink white unicorn doesn't make sense to me. Unless I had a pink white blue serving. I've done blue and white already, uh, Charles. The blue and the white was called Blu-ray by popular demand. Mm. So that's the vote, people. What are the colors? Um, Penguin is an option here right now. So it's about people, pink and white or blue and white? What's, what's get in? That, that's the popular choice, whether it be blue and white or pink and white. Blue and white colour sky is terrible. Blue and white isn't sky. I don't have yellow. What yellow serving? But we've done black and yellow already. They've done bumblebee. Pink and blue is alright. We haven't used white for a while though, so let's make a white string. Alright, so I think we uh, have our vote, I guess. Well, it seems like blue and white well, went out, so we'll do blue and white. What colour serving? Blue white to winner. What what's our our serving color for this one? Um, we need to bring the servings out. We saw it last time as well. So we'll get the servings out. Green, purple, black, white, pink, red. And gold and blue, our serving choices. So what would be people? We've got blue and white for the string. What is our serving material? Frostbot's a good name. <coughs> I agree. So what, we're going for blue and white with red serving, Fatty Patty. Red is a big vote at the moment, so we'll chop out the popular one. Seems red's going to win. Alright, fair enough. So it's just a combination. Yeah, red, red by far has been chosen, okay. So what, what should we call the string then, right? 
It's going to be blue and white, a candy cane effect. What will be the string name? Remember, the Patriot only works if you're American or Puerto Rican. And technically, yes, Australia's flag colours are the same colours. But, our national colours are green and gold. So I, I can't call it the freedom string. It doesn't make sense here, people. <coughs> It'd be a bit too patriotic. We, we can do a red string of gold serving. <laughs> and then remember, your patriotism only works if you're American. Red, white, and blue, that's a terrible name for a bar. I'm calling it America. <laughs> so, what's that name, people? Can't call it America. The Union Stream, why do we call it the Union Stream? Yeah, the tricolour. People, I think my name. So this will be a very patriotic string with a name. How about Liberty? Because that's the French flag, and Liberty is synonymous with freedom. Freedom. <laughs> I haven't used the red string, red circle for ages. Can't get through now. Damn it, people. This is why I need the uh, the biter luxury jig. It takes me longer to uh, get this one string into the the jig than actually making the whole um, string. Okay, steel. It does. Union Jack the same colours. I mean, I'm not making Union Jack. So most fights in the world are blue, white, and or red. It's no surprise there. So we'll start our, our base. Uh, I want a good name for this, guys. I, I'm not very patriotic, so all these, um, you know, America and Union Jack and stuff doesn't make sense to me. So I'm not exactly American or British. So, three passes each.
Tension is quite soft. Switch it up a bit. Oh, that's nice. That's still a little squishy there. Uh, this part should be. Oh, that's why. It's only freaking on the top. Ah, there we go. We couldn't be consistent with this. Work more. tension but it'll work for the first at least serving. Um, we're in red right so still think of a name guys right? That's what we're thinking of. Uh, I can't think of a name for this one. I've, I've no idea what to call this. That is a terrible serving. That is terrible. Uh, that's way too much tension there. It'll work fine. This won't be as long as uh, it should be. Uh, we, can, we can manage that. Second one should be much better. That is way too loose. Disappointing, but it'll be fine. I just mean more twist with a fix later. The screen left won't be exactly right, but uh, the, bigger. The, the The blue and white serving does go quite nice, nicer together. the midnight four degree heat form breakdown. A small loop will be actually be small this time. Yeesh. See what I've done? That's that's way too loose. How do I stuff that up? I really dropped the tension there. Mm. And we'll end up um, lengthening anyway when we start doing the uh, twist, but um, yeah, it's not going to be a particularly good string this one. Learn from mistakes. Let's stretch that to max. It's still a usable string, but uh, just the slack of the string makes it probably uh, going to be each too long. It's not bad, it's still not good though. Half an inch too long, I reckon. It'd be usable. Well, I'm not sure I'll, I'll like it. Because when you know you've made a mistake, it gets the speaking of mistakes, we've got separate strings. Ah, uh, what's the chat doing? Yeah, you gotta work. Uh, I need my kunai. So let's grab our strings. Colors are very nice. I reckon we'll, we'll get the pattern right, but the string will not be the right length. Because we've really messed up all the tension there. Damn, now we've, we've really messed up in this one. Let's switch the 
colors are correctly set if I twist them. That is the crucial part that I fucked up. Oh man, two color strings on a day like this is not nice. stream will take what 10 minutes this one's gonna be gigantic the wrong reasons okay so let's do this again undo this so I'll put that here I'm gonna Just right at this point. This is the part where I always screw it up. It's the colors are separated there. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I'm trying to remove the kunai and destroying the um, serving. And I'll twist the string again. Ah! Oh. Goodness. Oh, hang on. We got it back in place. I right, tighten it there. Colors are good. Alright, we got it. And this is why uh, color strings cost like 10% more. I started serving a bit too low, but I uh, just had to do it to get the, uh, the colors right. So we've messed up on the, the length, we've messed up on the uh, twists. So that's a lot of twists. I think it the pattern should, no, oh crap. It should turn out right. Once you separate the string, it should turn out right. There's no um, string out of place there. But this is probably my worst string of the series yet, despite the sheer number of errors made. And now uh, we finished what we started. That serving stuff up. Jeez. Oh, we can cover it up. You probably see how much simpler a single color string is. It's warm in here, guys. <laughs> We're not working over open flame or anything, but um, it really gets to you. Uh, a small loop. <sighs> There's no respite from the heat in here. How bad is my twist? Should sit very fine. Okay. Oh. I can't put the uh, the loop on the uh, the jig anymore. It's been really hard to focus. I'm not tired. It's just it's hot. Good. Next serving. Big loop.
content. Good length there. Kunai. Maybe a few twists I'd be alright to make sure we keep the um, colour separated. We can live with twist. We can't live with the uh, the colours blending in. I just slipped. So yeah, apart from those that are factory made, if you ever get a custom string, this is the process involved. It doesn't, this one's much better. There's, no, there's not as many twists, we push them down, so this will be much easier to do. The first loop I did, the, there were so many twists, because I did the tension wrong, that we couldn't get the um, colours correctly aligned. This one's much easier. The colours are aligned, without the same strain as having to uh, push them together. That said, I keep letting go of accident, but um, that should do it. No. Stop the game. Undo. Got to keep these separate. Better. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, this is the one part of the process of just spinning the entire string up. If you don't get those colours properly separated, it's going to turn into a very ugly um, candy cane. It'll look alright, but uh, it just won't look right. It has to be like one strand out of place, that's the main um, thing about these uh, two colour strings. You can tell I'm not really fun of them. They're nice to make once or twice for yourself, but uh, doing this for a base, basic club bow, you can see why it's way too excessive. But you need quality control and perfection to get this right. And club strings are kind of disposable. But um, that was it, all the fun of it. I'm still going to think of a name of this, guys. Now we can change the sense of serving, if that, if we're going to be different in colour. You don't have to use the same colour all three. Most people do, because it's consistent colouring and patterning, but you don't have to use the same serving. But uh, we'll keep with the red, but if at some point we run out of ideas, we could come up with better colour to the centre. But uh, I find that, you know, it, it, you, you don't really see all the serving colours anyway, so it's not like um, these names will be that super effective. In the end, a bow is a bow. You see the strings, the colour, Maybe the serving, you don't really notice the uh, the patterns. So it might be going overboard with this. Alright, so we to make sure that the colours stay separated for the rest of the spin. And we've got a nice colour there. They have successfully been separated at both ends. Yep. So let's put our kunai screw. I'm not going to make too many of these two colors change to the club, but uh, a lot of perfection is work there. Color perfect there. And there might be one twist in here. Yep, Got one error in here. That one was the one that we stuffed up on the, on the bottom end. Oh well, the bottom's not, not the important one. The color should be fine up to this point, so we're okay. Right, 
spin to win. And we should get the right pattern regardless of that mistake to start. Just making the bottom loop isn't a big deal because it's kind of coming from the top. Likes it. I want to get it twisted first, so I want to maintain the pattern. So we'll take off the jig, one loose strand, that should be okay. Yep. Okay, looks alright. Alright, let's wax it with still the, uh, the pattern in. And that wax is just like melting off. It is so warm in here. See a slight mistake on the bottom, but uh, as you have noticed. So that is our string done. If it was Russian, it'd be more like one color down the other line. If you anything, it's more like, you know, put, put a, you know, a white knocking point, more like Puerto Rican. Alright, 10 feet, whoops, just this way. And you should see that pattern emerge here. There we go. So let's uh, take it off, wrap it up. So I'm not sure the length is anywhere near correct, but uh, that is, I lost the twist, but okay. That is our white blue string with red serving. So what are we calling this string? Now, 
you, you might excuse me for being dehydrated in a very warm room, but uh, anything patriotic will sound incredibly stupid. Alright, it's not an American string in an American club. Although, if we had an American club which made all the strings, this would be freaking awesome, by the way. But uh, if you call it Patriot or anything freedom related, it's not going to make any sense to the people using it. Remember, we are handing the string and the bows out to people as a favorite bow or favorite string to recognize each one. You can tell I'm not the movie to be messed around with. It's freaking 40 degrees. I see people shouting Nazi and Comrade, I'm not amused. So let's just stick with the name for the string. What the hell will I call it Comrade? You can chill. It's not chilly here. Why the hell will I call it Baguette? Come on guys, we've been doing this for half an hour. We come up with these really shitty names like Baguette and Comrade. Come on, like, I, I, I haven't checked the chat for like half an hour and we're shouting the same sort of thing here. Come on, guys. What walk's a nice name? Yeah, I know it's a Mercer bread type. So what? I'm not French, I'm not in France. It's not a French string. Chromatic's not a bad idea, but it's not a good name. It's a descriptor. Can it can it make any sense? Captain America's not a bad name, but I, I don't want to use like, you know, copyrighted names because this sounds really dodgy. Apparently, I mean, we said Barbie, but Barbie's kind of so generic now. Captain America, you know, it kind of doesn't look like Captain America either. All right, so that's our string that we are thinking of a name. What can, what can we come up with? Adventure doesn't make sense. Oh, I've heard of a trogan. <laughs> hey, alright. Toothpaste, Fatty Patty. Toothpaste. That's ridiculous. I like that. Toothpaste. Well, why, why should we call it Apollo? Uh, I don't want to call it Apollo because we, we, we shoot Eastern Apollo, so it'll, it'll conflict. Barber poles are red and white. They're red and white because red represents blood. Because historically, barbers had the sharpest tools, so they doubled up as surgeons. Hence why they had the white and red pole on the front. So this wouldn't be a, um, a, a barber shop pole. We've got a plus one for toothpaste? Of course not, John. But people see the uh, the white and uh, whatever, red or blue stripes, normally become blue gel and white toothpaste. I can't call it Colgate. I like toothpaste. Toothpaste is a funny name. It'll go with bubblegum. We have bubblegum and toothpaste. It's, it's a non-patriotic neutral name that will go well with any string. Alright, I think toothpaste is the winner, so let's confirm that and vote yes for toothpaste. I, I like it. I, I like how can we, uh, we, we eventually come up with a good name. So confirm, I think Toothpaste is our winner, so that is our second string for the night. You know, it might not even be used because I'm not sure how long it is. We'll probably get the 
um, length right but adding lots of twists so it actually would look quite like toothpaste um, it w I was a bit I, I'm probably half an inch off like that was a really slack pass around that was the mistake we made here the colors came out okay slight twist on the bottom but that shouldn't come out too badly uh, but yeah I'm not sure this is usable we'll find out I can find out right now well, we'll, we'll put this on the uh, this, the uh, the OMP adventure We'll see if it actually holds any water. Proverbially speaking. So we'll ignore the uh, fancy bow type for it. In my infinite wisdom, I can't remember which was the top loop. Oh, that's the one, yeah. So we'll twist it a bit more. It was a little long, but if you string it, yeah, it's a, it's a bit longer than uh, usual. It's usable. It's not way up. I've had too much serving here. I might flip it up to down. See, see what happens. I can't remember which was a big loop. That looked like a big loop. Yeah, that was the big loop. I, I might have done the string wrong. What's happening, people? No, I think that's the right way. I'm string this, see what happens. Ah, uh, this looks wrong. No, oh, that's right. It was the right way up. Not sure what the serving's after. I, I must have um, really stuffed up the uh, the length because the uh, I think it looks alright. A lot more twist to it. You probably see the the pattern emerge. So actually, it, it, it turns out quite nicely. With a few exceptions, but uh, it should be okay. It is within reasonable length. Uh, I'd really start off on the other length of this one. So, probably usable. Right, let's try the, uh, a very twisted string. Yep. Yeah, uh, that looked fine. I think the servings off the mouth. I mean, we've got, we've got enough serving to go here. So there's plenty of uh, ver too much vertical adjustment. And the arm, because the, the, the rule of thumb is that you've got enough serving to cover the knocking point, enough serving to cover the arm, right? So I've just missed the arm, so I've kind of done too, too little serving down here, like just a bit, like probably an inch off. But it's fine. So that's the, uh, the toothpaste. That is toothpaste on the Samic Polaris or the OP Adventure. Brace tight should be okay. That, that, that's roughly fine for a trad bow. So there we go. That is bubblegum. There we go. Alright, so that is the completed string. Looks usable. And that will be it for tonight. So 
we'll hang around for a bit. We'll take a few questions. Sorry, take a few questions, but otherwise we'll uh, end the stream very shortly. So, last call for questions or comments. I don't make bigger lips. My lips are way too small. They work for the uh, the limb tips, but uh, I'm being too stinky on the um, the lips. I mean, I'm sure they work fine with my bow, like my own bow, but uh, the club bows might need a bit more generosity. I'll be fine now. Goodness. All right. So we'll wrap up the toothpaste. That was good. Good enough, rather. I'm not really a good enough person. I like, I like being like it should be the quality it should be, but um, sometimes you're gonna say good enough. We've done a wood one already. We've, we made a a green and brown string with brown serving. Um, sorry, green serving. We originally meant to call it Sherwood, but uh, Aztec won out yesterday. I'm not sure we're talking about Fatty Patty. Uh, why would I do that? Alright, let's see if they start. That's a painful string. So tonight we've made uh, ninja and toothpaste. A great combination. So I probably want to make two more 62 inch strings. I'm not going to do it now. It's uh, 3 a.m. And uh, you know, it's, it's not good condition to string making. Way too warm. If I had $10,000, I have $10,000. It's, really, it's not really a hypothetical question. Bow fishing isn't a sport. It's an activity, but it's not a sport. Uh, you, you missed the point, Fatty Patty, right? What is the purpose of the question? Okay? Because you're, you're, you're presenting a hypothetical question which is already real. So I have $10,000. I have ten thousand more dollars. I've got lots of I've got not lots, but I've got money. So it's not like a hypothetical, which needs to make sense to me. I spend up what I need, save the rest for a rainy day. It, it's it's still a meaningless question to me. It, it's a typical materialistic consumerist question, and uh, I, I, I have no thought. Like it, it, seriously, like if I won the lottery, I've got like ten million dollars, I would know what to do. Probably donate most of it to charity, uh, give it to the Royal Children's Hospital, uh, Heart Foundation, Australian Red Cross, and uh, probably save a bit for myself. The things that I want uh, don't cost money. And money can't buy what I need. I don't know about you can buy a 10 million, uh, you, can, you can buy a straight for 10 million dollars. I mean, you can probably buy Alaska for, Alaska rather, for 10 million. That is terrible, Sandra. Oh, God. 
hydrate. Jeez, it is so warm. Your worst like tomorrow. So I'm gonna sleep through that heat. Just wake up and it's cooler. Good grief. All right, question from Stephen: Can a 20 pound or lower drawstring shoot well in 18 meter range? You're making distance. Uh, 20 pound, yeah, you, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, it's it, it's a little on the weak side, but 20 pound bow can make uh, 18 meters. <laughs> it, it will arc at 18 meters. Like most bows will nearly find a straight line at 18 meters. Uh, 20 pound will arc, but it will make it fine. Um, have I been to other countries? I've been to Japan, I've been to uh, America and Vietnam. Or Vietnam, as we say in America. It's funny how like we bring the American accent into like Nam, because it, it's it's ever since the whole like Vietnam conflict, right? It's always Vietnam. I was in Nam, whereas um the actual pronunciation is Vietnam, so it's the the Nam sound. Nam means south. So it's got like means like South Viet. Um, so Nam is it's very American. Andreas, um, like a string that's ninety percent white, rest pink and gold serving, for champagne. That's not a bad idea. Um, it is possible to make like um, uneven coloured strings. Um, like it's basically just a ratio. Like um, I used to make um, equal like uh, let's say, um, but the last time I made a three colour string for myself was black, white, and red, and I think I had. Like, um, let's see, it was, what was it, 18 strand? So it was nine passes, and it was like, um, some weird combination, it was kind of like, um, five passes of black, two passes of white, two passes of red, to get nine. Oh, no, it was, it, I reckon it was that, it was, uh, it has to be five, three, and, I can't believe it now. No, it'd be four... Yeah, three, four, two. Yeah, three, four, two. Tough one to make. Um, and what you get is more of a pinstripe um, rather than a candy cane effect. So you have one very narrow um, color. So it can be done, but it is um, difficult. Sorry, because the, 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 the loose strand does not fall into place most of the time. Looks really good though. Uh, it can be done, it's just very difficult to do. Uh, relatively speaking, uh, can I do a video on Hatra? Uh, I am not the best person to do Hatra, right? Um, Armin is much better. He's, he's done a video on that already. Um, Armin Herma does that. Uh, you probably want someone who knows how to shoot thumb draw to talk about Hatra. Uh, Bobby Book, would you make strings with different end servings? It can be done. Um, it the things that it w what you see here like when I hold a complete string tied up like this, it looks fine. When you string it, like do you really pay attention to the top and bottom servings? The string's so long you don't even see it, so it's a kind of a waste. Now it makes sense. So here for the uh, the, the the polaris, it look look at this right. Like when, when I hold a bow. All you see is the center serving, so it's almost like the end servings don't matter. There's the main color string, there's a serving material, and that's the most color blend. Most people go for the same, the bottom same, and top make it convenient, but like you could, but it's very hard to appreciate the color scheme unless someone points it out to you. It can be done, it's really easy to do. I've done it once or twice before, but it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're making decorations in places people don't see. So unless you actually point it out, um, but this doesn't look that nice. Like, I, 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 there was one guy who just didn't give a crap about his string color, so he said, just make me one of everything. So we had like th like two colors, like white and purple, with red serving in the middle, blue in the top, and white on the bottom. It was like really ugly. Um, but it can be done. Just, like, there's no point to it, really. How long have I been shooting Lone Wolf? I'm shooting for six and a half years now. Howling Wolf, a lot, a lot of wolves here tonight. Um, I have to thank you for your Saunders Power Pool, right? I was looking for something to exercise, for sessions, exactly what you need. Good. 
Um, a lot of good tools. I mean, that the one I have to read at the moment is the Acubo. That's a very advanced uh, tool. Uh, good tool. I haven't used it myself a lot, but I've led to people who really got out of it. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Sword of Power is a nice tool. Alright, any last questions? I think we will wrap it up again. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we made two strings tonight, considering that was a um, you know two a.m. kind of a night shift. Um, I reckon for two more for sixty-two inches, at least. No, we've got a lot more than that. I've uh, made because we, we, we've 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 counted the number of bows we have. Um, I think I need to make two more sixty-two inches. The rest I need to kind of adjust based on that. I don't have a Patreon. Um, I, I've explained in other videos before, but um, I, I I am morally I, I have a moral high ground on this one. Patreon is good when you're doing YouTube for full time and it's your own revenue stream. It's a way to show support for the creator. I work a job. I make money. I don't want your money. There, there will be a, a time and place where I might, you know, ask for donations, but that is not this time. I don't want to blow away the good karma unnecessarily. Because when people give money, people have expectations. I maintain that what you get is what you pay for, and if you pay, for, you don't pay a single cent for, you know, looking at my content, then uh, you uh, don't have any disappointment. So. Um, it's just like, you know, for, for me, I, I, I don't really find there's any gain from Patreon. It's not going to replace my day job. Um, I'm not going to earn that much money. I'm going to take time off. And I can't anyway, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher. You know, I know some people work part-time and that's really flexible. I'm thinking maybe one day I might switch to part-time. But, like, I'm still, um, I'm still dedicated to my work and, um, you know, you, you, you can't really take me away from that. You know, even if you like give me a thousand dollars a month of Patreon, I'm still gonna work full time, I'm still gonna do what I'm doing right now. So it's my it's my lifestyle choice. YouTube is not a career for me. Um, it probably won't be. It's an outlet, it's a vent, um, but it's not uh, it is it isn't um, a way for me to actually live off. What revenue I make is a bonus and uh, what I do make is back to the channel, you know, buying products or whatever. Um, a video on Khatra, Myth or Viable Method. You know, I, I'll, I'll make a quick point now, right? I can't prove or disprove Khatra. Uh, but what I do believe is that the techniques that are passed down through hundreds of years are passed down for a reason. It is unusual or uncommon for a style to maintain techniques which are useless. Now, this is a lot to do with more martial arts. That's why a lot of martial arts diverge because some techniques are kind of worked out and other, uh, others have worked in. If a lot of styles, like the Turkish style, still teach Khatra, then there is a reason why it exists. Um, can I prove its effectiveness? I'm not wishing to do so. However, I am a proponent of maintaining the style's purity. If you want to be an all-round archer, then you, can, you might choose to discard Khatra. But if you are learning Turkish shooting, then you learn Khatra. Of course, there are styles which don't use some that do. In the end, in my opinion, the most important thing is you train the style that you want to train, and you train to do it well. You can shoot well with Khatra, you can shoot well without it. That's my opinion. If you, if you execute Khatra poorly, then you're going to be a poor shot. But if you execute Hatra, Hatra, sorry, I'm losing my voice there, Hatra well, then you will shoot well. Likewise, if you don't use Hatra and you shoot consistently, then you shoot well. 
Um, if you force yourself to use it and you're bad at it, then it's not going to work out well. But that's my general opinion. Again, I'm not in a position to prove or disprove it. The other big reason why I'm not going to make a video on Khatra is that I have no expertise in the subject. I can read about it, but I have no authentic knowledge. Again, I refer to um, uh, Armin for his uh, content on uh, thumb draw shooting and his, because he's more familiar with several thumb draw techniques. I can barely like thumb draw as it is. Um, and look, I'm sure you're more than aware of uh, Greg from 3D Archery in his video on Khatra. Um, I, I honestly felt that video was a mess. And I respect differing opinions, but I felt that Greg didn't understand Khatra well. He couldn't execute it. Um, it was an atypical, um, it was an unusual demonstration. And the way he defended his opinion, um, it, just, it was strange. Um, I, I, I don't want to talk about too much detail because I respect Greg. Um, but it was a very unusual line of argument that happened like a year ago. And I didn't want to fall to the same trap of making a video. I'm, look, I, I do cover debatable things like, you know, why do we need sight and stabilizers? And at least we have a clean reason why. Like, I'll, I'll say as it is, this is the objective reason why. If people still think archery Olympic style is cheating, that's their opinion, I don't give a damn. But Khatra is different. People get really worked up about it. Uh, I, I mean, I'm the sort of person who probably can explain it as cleanly as possible, which might be why you are, you're asking me in particular. Uh, but yeah, I would only cover content if I know enough about it. I am barely able to talk about thumb draw. It's kind of like, ironic because, like, in my Shadowverse response video, I thumb shot. Um, that that was <laughs> um, something which everyone said, you know, like you left it out, and it was obvious thing in the video. And ironically, I I shoot thumb draw. Like, it's the first video where I primarily shot thumb draw to demonstrate because that was the one that, one thing that was missing. Um, so, yeah, no need for impartial scientific approach. Oh, you need uh, you need a, a scientific impartial approach. Yeah, I, I can't do it. I can't prove it. The Turkish Khatra archers the same as the Mongolian. There are similarities, but there are differences. The style of bows are different, and some techniques are different, but there are a lot of similarities. Oh, it's Philip. Hello, Philip. Well, what time is it in Germany now? It'll be what, afternoon for you guys? Well, it is 3.13 here, so I reckon we'll wind it up. Okay, thank you for joining me. Uh, there will likely be another stream, and there'll be more of these. Like, I'm making tons of strings for the club, and I, I like the idea of making each string unique, and hopefully it'll turn out a bit better. <laughs> Arm is evasive. Yeah, now I, I, I it, he, he kind of is evasive in his, in, in his videos and his response too. But um, yeah, like I, said, I I can't prove it, so uh, I, I'm the worst person to ask here, uh, Morton. Um, yeah, you, you ask about you know, Khatra to actual Khatra users, as someone that doesn't use Khatra, and don't use a style that uses Khatra, I can't prove it. So whatever, whatever works, works, right? So if you shoot better without it, then you shoot better without it. Uh, I, I believe the styles which are codified are done for a reason. If they weren't effective, they wouldn't be codified. And that that's my, my, my consensus, well, that's my... Um, my statement on that. The styles use Katara as part of their, um, their, their doctrine or their, their formula, then so be it. Every style has unique differences and um, that sort of thing. You can't really compare it. Because it was, it was very seldom like, you know, this faction used Katara and won every war. We can't do that. <laughs> You're like handsome later. My goodness. That is a frustrating game. I actually don't like the game, to be honest. Handsome later. Um, that is uh, not a particularly fun game. It, it's a good idea, considering it costs like two bucks to buy. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good idea, but I think if they actually refine it a bit more, um, like they didn't make like 
you know, certain levels impossible to aim at. I'm literally on the side, you can't actually point your hands that way. Uh, it would be as frustrating. But um, yeah, no, I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, tutorials. I just like figuring things out, and there you go. All right, I'm going to call it now. Um, it's now 3.15. We've reached the end of conversation. So again, thank you very much. Uh, do take care of yourselves, especially if you're in Australia and Melbourne. That's freaking hot today. Uh, hydrate, rest well, don't, uh, don't overdo yourself. And I hope you guys enjoy your the rest of your day, wherever you are. This is New Sensei. I'll be the Zen.